Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist, but today I'm here with an absolute pro in regards to cut flowers in zone three. So you are amazing with cut flowers. She has an Instagram, a blog, and that's where you started with blogging. Yes, that's correct. And now she is a YouTuber. So you guys have to go give her a follow. And she, you were my inspo for doing my um, dahlias this year. Oh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so I just, I'm not much into cut flowers. I've never, I enjoy petunias. Okay. And <laughs> alyssum and lobelia. Like yes. really like basic yes. ones. So I have a ton of questions for you and we're just going to jump right into it. But make sure you go check out her channel because there's definitely a video that's going up over there that you guys are really going to enjoy because we're going out to her acreage and we are going to be testing the soil out there to give her a better idea of what she needs to do to have a beautiful cut flower farm slash uh, farmer's market type garden. Yeah. So question. Okay. How do you, my first question, how do you pick a flower for a cut flower? That I find this so confusing. Mm. I am the classic person that if I cut petunias or something and right. I stick them in a vase, they just wilt right away. So how do you right. choose something that works? So you're just looking for a long and strong stem. I am not a snob when it comes to cut flowers. Anything in my yard, if it has a long and strong stem, it is fair game for in the vase. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. is there any plants that do better or uh, last longer in a vase or is there a way to get them to last longer in the vase? Yeah, um, definitely some plants do better than others. I'm going to maybe tell you the plants that don't do as well because it's a long, like a sh much shorter list. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was the opposite. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so things like poppies are really tricky if you want to get them to last in the vase. You have to cut them and then put them immediately into boiling water oh. and you need to know the right stage, like just when the, the bud is starting to crack. So like they're kind of finicky so I actually don't grow poppies except for the seed heads just for that reason because I don't have that time oh wow okay, yeah so I had no idea yeah that's very cool so to get your stuff to last longer you um, trim your stems in the vase every day or two and then you want to change the water every day or two and if you have space in your fridge then keep it in your fridge overnight and it'll oh, really extend the life bring them out every morning yes to enjoy it. Oh, yeah. okay okay that makes sense and then so that would also go for store bought flowers too. Yes, you do oh. the exact same things. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, well, this all makes sense now. Is yeah. why mine don't. Because <laughs> yeah, I've seen flowers that you are using in your cut mm. flower um, arrangements and things, and I'm just I'm absolutely blown away by some of the stuff you use. And I never would have thought like zinnias, for example. Yeah. Never would have thought that's a, like a cut flower. But when mm -hmm. you see your bouquets with it, it just is gorgeous. Yeah. Now you also have to be careful with like zinnias and snapdragons because there's varieties for containers and then there's varieties that are specifically for cut flowers. Oh really? Yeah. So you want to look on the seed or packet to just look at that stem length. And then sometimes it'll even say like for containers or for cut flowers. So you just got to watch. Oh, okay. So yeah. the actual seed packets will tell you. Yes. Now that said, you can also grow stuff for cut flowers in a container. So for example, like this Cosmo and these bachelor buttons. Unfortunately, I cut away all the nice bachelor buttons for the bouquets I made, but like look at the stem length. Yeah, that's crazy. On that. And it'll just do that even in your container. And then with the Cosmos, if you only put one in the container, you'll get the stem length. If you put say like three or four, like you would in a normal container planting, then they'll stay short and they're not as oh, good. Oh, and then you can't use them for bouquets. Yeah. I mean, um, you could if you want to do a shorty, but not yeah. for the nice ones. Yeah. <laughs> that's not what people want anymore. They yeah. Want, like the big like hanging. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. What do you use for greenery? Um, I use any sort of bush or small bit of tree that I already have on the property. But if you don't have that where you're living, you can plant a bunch of herbs. You can use um, the tomato clippings when you're trimming up your tomatoes. You can just put those in the vase. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And um, for Cosmos, I actually use them for greenery more than I use them for the flowers. Yeah. Because I was going to say that is a very like ferny type yeah. vibe. It's so pretty. Okay. Yeah, because I, you're, so you're using the greenery that's like in your yard. Yes, and this is, I didn't plant any of it. This is just what was here when I moved here. Okay, cool. So we'll have to maybe do some footage and show yes. everybody of what everything looks like. So yeah, yeah I, I honestly love what your, your bouquets look like. They look very, very cool. So. Thank you. Yeah, so when do you start your seeds? Like for, if you were to have, say, 
uh, person was getting married in June. Oh, no. Change your wedding date. <laughs> if you want to do your own flowers, like yeah. in zone three, yeah. unless you've established peony bushes, change your wedding date. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Kay. Yeah, it's really hard. So what if you were set with seeds, you didn't have perennials? Mm. What is the day to start? Okay. the You would start your flowers, um, some of them as early in February. And so like for eucalyptus, say you wanted that, you'd have to start that at Christmas. Oh, wow. Ideally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Same thing with lisianthus. You'd want to start that around Christmas. And then those would be ready for harvest slash bouquet styles. Um, August. August. Really, if you want to do your own flowers for your own wedding, you need to have an August wedding in Saskatchewan. That's crazy. Yeah, so you really do. Zone three, <laughs> probably zone four too, even. Yeah. I mean, you can get away with mid-July. Yeah. is also fine but if like it's a cold year like we yeah. had in other years then you're stuck like july can be tricky you're stuck with that yeah okay. so you were talking about removing some of your garlic to plant your fall plants yes and i was just wondering what is a fall plant that works for zone three that then can be harvested right so i'm still actually trying to figure this out this is experimental but um ranunculus they're normally a spring plant and those i would start in march those and harvest are such a cool looking plant yeah okay i have to insert <laughs> photos of those those are a cool looking yeah flower. yeah so i guess okay i lied if you want a june wedding you have to grow ranunculus <laughs> like that's that's your only option because <laughs> you could plant it in the spring yes yeah okay, okay. yeah um but i'm trying to fall planting of them so i I started them at the end of June and then they're ready to go and so I'll pull out my garlic put the ranunculus in throw on some cloth so they get a little more shaded out and hope for the best yeah that's yeah. gonna be really cool that's gonna look awesome sweetheart hello oh you can't touch that though are you ready to film my I'm YouTube black. video <gasps> yeah do you want to film a YouTube video black. yeah it is black <laughs> <laughs> so cute okay so we're here with um the labor portion of this the last so time i was here she was helping pick flowers with mom and mom didn't want flowers necessarily picked but yeah, oh there was know. awesome at helping out so. yeah she planted beans with me at the acreage the other day oh yeah yeah it might be the craziest rose you've ever seen but i don't <laughs> care i was just happy she wanted to do it with me honestly it's not a bad thing because mm -hmm. the reason i got into gardening the only reason i went into mm -hmm. soil science plant science any of it was mm -hmm. my grandma oh really yeah my Aww. grandma was off hardcore gardener flowers yeah. fruits and vegetables you name it she yeah. did it and I helped her with everything and okay. I was like you and I would kill majority of stuff so she yeah. gave me my own little area in the yard to yeah. actually garden in and I had my own little seedlings Aww. and stuff and then she'd uh, only water with spray bottles mm -hmm. because I'd want to water seedlings like mm -hmm. every day of the yep. week uh, multiple times a day yep. so mm -hmm. she knew as long as I had a spray bottle I'd be busy for yep. hours and hours and she's nothing would ever get over water right she's so. a smart woman <laughs> <laughs> she is she is so but if you keep gardening it's a good thing yeah. Maybe you'll be the next soil scientist. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next question is, how do you decide what to plant and mm -hmm. determine, you know, how much greenery you need, how much flowers you need? Um, I guess deciding margin of error, like, you know, yeah, stuff that may not come up, planning for right. death. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, totally. after 45 degrees celsius <laughs> totally <laughs> okay so you really want to plan with your bouquets in mind you don't even have to know specific colors but you just want to make sure that you have lots of hero flowers filler flowers and your What's greens a hero, flower? a hero flower is like the big showy flower in the arrangement oh, okay. so the dahlia or like the bigger zinnias in some cases sunflowers things like that yeah, i'm a sunflower nut yeah. i love sunflowers <laughs> yeah and so I tell people that like you always want to plant your minimum of 12 if you have yeah. a large acreage like yeah. I would say just yeah. do a tray of 72 yeah. that should be your yeah. minimum okay. but like yeah. if you're in a backyard like I am yeah. 12 is the absolute yeah. minimum so you would do like 12 sunflowers yeah I mean once you get into yeah. it 12 sunflowers is like that's what? not going to take you very far but if you're yeah. just starting out and you sort of don't know what you like and you maybe don't have a lot of space what and like is 12 is always the minimum yeah flowers? exactly those are flowers um, yeah 
but yeah and then when i move out to the acreage like i think 72 of anything will just be my minimum really yeah okay okay yeah. and that's enough yeah. to buffer you if something doesn't come up and yeah then if something looks a little funny weather yeah. issues yeah. and i really found this year with the stuff that i only planted 12 when i'm going to make my bouquets especially for a wedding and if it's a bigger order like 12 just does not cut it really yeah okay. and, and not everything's ready at the same time either yeah no that's mm. true too yeah so do you do 12 in waves okay. hey, look, <laughs> she's a good flower picker yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a flower it's very beautiful it smells it's good too animal. yeah I yeah can i smell it oh my goodness that's cute so would you plant out of that 12 you would plant them all at one time or would you do the wave method so you do six and then six or mm -hmm. how would you go about doing that or would it be 12 and then 12 yeah i do 12 and then another 12 but again it's just going to depend how much space you have yeah. and for the person who's like brand new to this i would just avoid succession planting for now just plant the flowers get used to growing them get some success under your belt and then the next year you can start adding successions okay for sure and, yeah. and then from the perspective of um someone who doesn't you know necessarily have grow lights or doesn't necessarily have oh my God. <laughs> it's <That's> okay good. <laughs> well, it's like the kiss me kiss me yeah. or whatever it was when you were little yeah um so from the perspective of someone who doesn't have grow lights and necessarily can't grow indoors mm -hmm. um flowers are going to be the same as vegetables in the sense that they're going to get really leggy if yes. they don't have the grow lights yep. and have the grow lights at the right height mm -hmm. so if someone doesn't have that set up but they really do want to have like cut flowers in the home is yeah. there anything you can start direct in the garden again that mm -hmm. isn't in that perennial type Range. Yes, um, you can start things like sunflowers, bachelor buttons, cosmos, yes. zinnias, um, any like Dara or baby's breath, stuff like that. You can start all of those from seed. There's tons. Okay. And would you plant those on the day of your last frost date or would, or at the end of your last frost date or would you plant them two weeks before like how would you generally mm -hmm. go about doing that um some of the cool weather ones like calendula and those bachelor buttons you could do a little bit before the two weeks but most of the flowers you're going to have to do right at that last frost date and it's very tricky because if you wait too long just because our season is so short like say with cosmos you barely get to enjoy them before the frost comes so you mm -hmm. really have to be on it yeah so right away yeah may 25th yeah or 23rd or whatever yeah. it is so <laughs> okay yeah for sure and then what perennials in zone three or in canadian cooler zones mm -hmm. which would be a usda four for anyone from america because i know a lot of you are americans as well what uh perennials could you plant that would be like a cut flower type thing there are so many oh really so, oh yeah there's tons um so my favorites so the peonies but you do have to wait three years for those yes um, I like delphiniums and lupins Veronica is always nice um, rudbeckia feverfew the rudbeckia and the feverfew like not all varieties are necessarily meant for being perennials but what I found in our zone is if you um, cover them with leaves in the fall and then put another like a frost cloth or something just over it to keep the leaves in place oh, really? you can cheat it a bit oh really they might not all live but a couple of them will live so oh, really <laughs> yeah. okay so that's really interesting because yeah. I have a flower bed in the front yard that is like mega hot mega dry mm -hmm. and um i put some uh alium like the globe masters yeah. in yeah and they're i think they're for a higher zone or they're right not exactly meant and they right. did really really well this year yeah um in that really warm hot bed so mm -hmm. uh, i i'm looking for more for yeah. that area and i find zone three doesn't do well there and for yeah. whatever reason they will they usually only make one season and then they dry out they almost get too hot yes i've had that in you've my, had in that one of my too. houses yet yeah, with alliums i did a whole big spring planting when i lived at my house in humboldt yeah and it's south facing same thing maybe a little bit of poor soil like it just all died yeah, yeah. so i'm having this issue in my front front flower bed so now i'm debating do i go and move up into zone four plants in hopes oh. of <laughs> Not necessarily. Flowers. I would focus on more the fall blooming perennials because those ones tend to be more drought resistant. Oh, okay. And I think you they do better. Like the spring stuff likes cool temperatures. Yeah. So that's never going to do as well there. No. And I um, 
I like sedum, but I don't love sedum. And I don't mm, want to sedum yeah, the whole fair, fair, thing. Fair. So what would be a um, zone three, super hot, uh, poor soil, admittedly. Mm. What would I put there? Probably for? rudbeckia and asters. Um, Liatris is going to do well there. Okay. Um, blanket flower will do well. I mean, that's not the greatest for cut flowers because the stems are pretty short. Yeah. But I have salvia right there. It's like literally. Oh yeah, tiny. salvia. Salvia loves it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It does love it. <laughs> and then, oh, I know you said your backyard is like overrun with amaranth, but amaranth yes. will also do really well there too. Oh, my front yard. I have one. I left some for you. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> the ones that germinated when I was weaning, I was like, I'll yeah. just leave these and see. we'll see if yeah. we get flowers on it. So then you can use them because mm -hmm. um, I put that in my... Uh, do not grow list of plants <laughs> for zone three. I mean, oh, I think no. you posted my favorites to yeah. grow. <laughs> <laughs> Those bright pink ones. And I'm like, yeah. no. But you know what's so funny? They are pretty. Because on the acreage where we have the poor soil, they're yeah. just like flourishing. Yes. And then here they, like, they do okay in the clay soil, but not, not as well. Yeah, not as happy. Yeah. yeah. So I have really, mm -hmm. uh, sand, where my amaranth is taking mm -hmm. over is in that sandy soil yeah. area. And so, I mean, there's really, it is a very pretty plant mm -hmm. and I wouldn't, you know, I should just let it grow because it is very gorgeous. That's oh, fine. <laughs> but it's, it's the place it's doing best is in this really hot, really dry. And now yeah. I'm kicking myself thinking, well, maybe I should just. Just like accept it. Yes. And go and with let it. it take yeah. over. It is hot pink, you guys. It is like the hot pink. <laughs> oh, cause, okay. I'll give you some prettier stuff. Like when my other colors come, I'll yeah. save some seeds for you okay. and we'll get you prettier things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's different colors then. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's coral and um, lime green and there's dark red red yes yeah. okay so we might have to do another video next spring or mm -hmm. in the winter time where you are going to come help me mm -hmm. uh plant and prepare that is not purple petunias <gasps> if you came okay. to my yard yeah <laughs> you'd be like wow this is purple petunia overload but i love yeah. purple i love purple yeah. and i love petunias again my grandma's mm -hmm. got me addicted to petunias but other than that, it's like Lobelia and then Alyssum. I don't, I am so scared of the Copa. Yeah, Lobelia, yeah. I love, I love Lobelia. But anyways, I am uh, not, I need to expand my horizons more into mm -hmm. lots of different stuff. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, go check out Shifting Roots over on YouTube, Instagram, on the blog, Facebook. Yeah, Facebook too. Yeah, so probably all, yeah. all, all over, the things. everywhere. <laughs> Pinterest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there you go. And um, yeah, cold climate, zone three, zone four. I mean, Canadian, Canadian gardeners and Northern American gardeners that want to get into the cut flower business um, in the backyard. It's a great way to make some extra cash mm -hmm. or just to have really nice house parties even. Yeah, totally. And yeah. I got to say, so I've written this book about cut flowers, cut flowers being simple. And at first I thought it would only be good for our zone, but I've had people from Texas who have used oh, the plans really? in there. Yes. And like had great results and stuff. So it does work all over North America. Okay. <laughs> so when we're doing this, um, mm -hmm. while, while you're watching this, I'll maybe have that book you'll send me the yeah, photos for that you, book sure. and we'll have it up on the up on the screen so it's yeah. an ebook right yes it is an ebook okay and you can get that on your website yeah yeah so very very valuable stuff um for anyone looking for something that's not just the simple soil science and science uh side of things mm. cut flowers <laughs> this way <laughs> like I have my dahlias now which I really really like they're like purple too so. you're gonna be hooked yeah <laughs> you really are I am after <laughs> yeah. this heat oh yeah. my landa they are just gorgeous so I want to thank you guys so much for watching be sure to give this video a thumbs up let me know in the comments down below if you are into cut flowers or if you want to get into cut flowers and be sure to hit that subscribe button I will talk to you guys next time bye